Chapter 156 to 159. You should regret losing your tail, Kakarado. Vegeta yelled, as he looked at the moon and began to notice how it began to grow, his teeth lengthened, his voice became more deep and hair began to grow all over his body. And spoiler. It wasn't due to puberty. Eh. <sighs> Vegeta yelled as he transformed in a sinister, violent, unpleasant way, and that took a long time to complete. Time when all Scion seemed quite vulnerable due to his exaggerated mutation in both bones and muscles. So Goku without moving a muscle partly because of the confusion and amazement of seeing that bizarre show, and partly because in this manga no one stops the transformations except for Android 17. So Vegeta continued to transform into King Kong's badass brother, Chich. This can't be. Said Goku, who still did nothing despite seeing how his enemy for the first time exceeded him in both size and power. More than enough time for the public to comment on Vegeta's move from the stands. This is what I feared would happen, Piccolo said, sensing Vegeta's remarkable increase in power. Yes, we more than you. The secret hiders answered. Mmm. What do you mean? Asked Gohan, who didn't quite understand what his father's friends were trying to express. Basically that they have been hiding from their friend for years that he can transform into a giant monkey and that right now that secret has been revealed. In the same way that your parents have hidden you for years that Santa Claus doesn't exist and that unlike them, I just told you, Broly said to his favorite student, who didn't expect that revelation, neither one nor the other. What? Santa Claus is not real? Gohan shouted upon discovering the fucking reality, his parents lied to him absurdly and unnecessarily, as it has happened to all of us. Ahem. Can we take this seriously Broly-san? Yamcha said, who was too worried about his friend to joke, especially about the jokes of the guy who stole his girlfriend. Yes yes. Damn, it seems that he forgets that I can resurrect you as many times as I want. Stay calm, I am in charge, Broly said, remembering once again that with him there was no need to fear giant monkeys with superpowers. And after remembering that little detail that had made it so much easier and convenient for all of them, except for Yamcha, everyone calmed down a bit. Goku can win. The power of that beast is amazing, asked Mutant Rashi, who despite not believing in numbers as a determining factor in a fight he couldn't help but think of the huge difference in raw power between them. And Yam who seemed to have been waiting for this moment for two chapters ago replied, obviously favoring Vegeta, when a Saiyajin transforms into Ozaru his strength increases x10 and although when using the power ball our key decreases a lot due to the energy expenditure the multiplier doesn't vary too much. If we add the fatigue that Vegeta has suffered, we could say that currently his effective multiplier is around x9. And if what your babysitter says is true, your father can only multiply his power as maximum to x7 but at the risk of losing his life and for a short time. Do you know how to multiply child? Babysitter? Said Broly, who was partly surprised by the fact that they called him that way, although seeing how he had protected, instructed, directed the entire team, some of whom seemed or were children, he found it quite adequate. I know how to design and build a spaceship, of course I know how to multiply. And my father won't lose, Gohan replied, offended by how they had underestimated his academic abilities and his father. Battles aren't won by having a higher level of power. I guess you should know by now, said Krillin, bragging as usual when he believed that the situation was under control. Possibly, but not when the difference is so great, Yam replied with a mocking tone, since he had very deeply installed in his mind the idea that it was impossible for Vegeta to lose in this way against a low-class Scion warrior who couldn't even transform. And this nonsensical gathering would continue if the moderator didn't put order. MMM you two are right and at the same time and either is. Everything is circumstantial. But don't forget that Goku always grows when he fights. Therefore, my estimation of his Kaioken could quickly change. Also, this is a transformation with quite a few disadvantages, Broly said as he materialized sacks of popcorn and a soft drink dispenser for everyone including Yam and the broadcast team as he indicated that they should watch the match and stop talking. And once again we refocused on the final match. Final combat in which Vegeta like most giant monkeys in fiction. Try to crush his enemy like a cockroach. And Goku obviously didn't want to be crushed, so he successfully avoided the various stomps and slaps that King Kong Vegeta threw at him. Crash. Hmm. Flash. Crash. And obviously due to Vegeta's colossal size, the fight shifted out of Broly's ring. So many rocks began to be destroyed in his path. How's this, Kakarado? It's over for you. King Kong Vegeta yelled as he continued his cat and mouse game, chasing Goku across those dunes. Ah. Uh. 
a great ape. A great ape monster. Goku said as he tried to remember something that he knew that should remember for having seen Vegeta transform into a giant monkey. And because this is an anime slash manga world, obviously that memory was portrayed as a flashback. Goku, during Nights of Yule Moon, great ape monsters come out. Therefore, you must not go out outside. You'll be safe if you sleep, the Grandpa Gohan said warning little Goku not to go outside the house. Advice that would be taken very seriously even after becoming the strongest man in the world. So he never tried to get revenge on those giant monkeys that he never saw and that supposedly caused the death of his grandfather Gohan, yes, it doesn't make much sense. How about I get rid of that tail forever? I think it will somehow only be in your way. And it also brings to mind not very pleasant memories, Kami said, while looking at little Goku and his tail and superimposed that image with the one of little Broly. I see. I finally get it now. T is. The one who stepped on Grandpa and killed him and the monster that appeared at the Martial Asset Tournament and destroyed the buildings. T that was all me. Goku said, which thanks to those flashbacks and many other clues in his life he discovered for himself, although Raditz also told him, but late, the secret of the tale of the science. And at the same time he internally apologized to his grandfather. Guach Vegeta yelled once more as he prepared to hit Goku one more time, but now doing it efficiently. Kaioken X5. Goku understood that he couldn't be reserved in those moments, so he used the Kaioken in a more or less dangerous multiplier to dodge the fast and powerful punch of King Kong Vegeta. Ah ya. Goku yelled as he avoided Vegeta's punch and kicked him in his gigantic face. Clash. However, even though that blow caused him pain, redness, and even some blood. It didn't have much effect on Vegeta, who felt as if he had been stung by a wasp. Painful but bearable. Die degusting bug. Vegeta yelled as he slaped Goku with his open hand, as if Goku was an annoying mosquito that was flying around him and trying to suck his blood. Flash. Ag. Goku yelled, who was injured for the first time since the fight started, since he was distracted for a moment when he saw that Vegeta hadn't been stunned by that blow when he believed that he had been badly hurt. Being embedded in the ground due to that slap. Ha 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 ha. What happened? Where's the arrogance you had a few seconds ago? King Kong Vegeta said, who was almost horny to see how Goku had been injured and was embedded in the ground in the same way he had been before, twice. Damn, it has become very strong and hard. The Kaioken X5 may not be enough to defeat him. I must increase my power to the maximum, although I don't know how long my body can hold, Goku thought as he tried to get up from the hole with the shape of his own body. Ha 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 ha. This is finally fun. I will show you the great difference between us crushing you like a bug. Vegeta yelled as he lifts his paw to make it fall later and crush the already crushed Goku. But at that moment. Kaioken X7. Plus. Goku increased his power at the right time to receive that stomp. And using the ground on his back as a fulcrum, with his legs he hit Vegeta's huge paw, destabilizing him with a single blow and with that he made him fall to the ground to his amazement. Nanny. Vegeta yelled when he saw that he was inevitably falling to the ground. And then Goku took advantage of the power ball that Vegeta had put in the sky to use it against him. Solar Flare. Goku used the Ten Shinha technique to blind Vegeta momentarily before he fell to the ground. Palm. Ah. My eyes. I can't see. Kakarado, you bastard. How you dare. Eh. Vegeta thought and screamed from the ground as he tried to regain his vision and lift himself until he realized something disturbing when he regained his vision some seconds later. Ka, me. Goku, was in front of him and was illuminating his entire range of vision with blue color. Che me. And the origin of that blue light was precisely a Kamehame that Goku started preparing in the few seconds that Vegeta was blinded. Haiya. A Kamehameha Kaioken X6 that was about to hit him a few meters away. Shit. Vegeta yelled when he saw that he had no chance of avoiding that attack. He barely had time to protect himself with his arms and his key. Fuiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
boundary at which the earth around him began to fracture and cause a mini earthquake, the environmental damage in Dragon Ball is strange, some attacks of 50,000 units can destroy worlds and others of 1 million simply open small craters. Kaioken X7 And Goku continued to further increase his power, reaching the maximum limit that Broly announced at the beginning. Measure he took upon see that Vegeta was being able to counter what he aimed to be his final attack. Kakarado. You little. It'll kill you. King Kong Vegeta yelled, which was being dragged, injured, and burned by that energy attack that for the second time hit his body that day. But unlike the first time, this time the torrent of energy hit his body now devoid of armor, but nevertheless his head and specifically his mouth was free of all obstacles. And pointed at Goku. Oh shit. Goku said when he saw that a strange purple light began to appear in King Kong Vegeta's mouth. And that could only mean one thing. He was trying to fight back with an energy attack. That was very bad news. An attack that possibly wouldn't kill him, but that would prevent him from continuing to use that Kamehame. A Kamehame in which he was putting almost all his energy. Energy that will have wasted in the event that he could no finish him. There is no other way. Goku thought as he analyzed the situation while preparing to do something dangerous. Kaioken X8. And with this increase in power the Kamehame grew stronger. Aw. Oh. Nanny. Monkey Vegeta thought, he didn't speak because his mouth was busy, noticing that the pain in his stomach was increasing and that his body was moving away from Goku faster, impossible. Can he still increase his power further? Kaioken X9. Goku screamed once more as his red aura covered his body more furiously, body that was swelling due to the pressure that he couldn't bear, showing an abnormally bulky musculature. Eh. King Kong Vegeta shouted, which had to unintentionally cancel his mouth attack due to the unexpected increase in the power of the attack that was trying to destroy him. Therefore, he went on to use all his energy to defend himself against the Kamehame, cannot be. I can't lose to him. I can't lose to this slag. I am Vegeta. The greatest. Shit. He is too tough. Goku shouted when he saw that although his muscles were about to explode after exceeding his limit several times in this fight, as always happens in all manga slash anime, he hadn't yet defeated his enemy. So. Kaioken X10. Goku screamed as he exceeded his limits once more with the intention of sentencing that combat once again. Eh. This cannot be happening. Vegeta yelled again, who noticed once again that the power of Goku's Kamehame had increased. Goku's attack had grown to the point of completely surpassing Vegeta's power. And this put him in a critical situation. Which couldn't counter. Eh. Eh. Hi. Both Goku and Vegeta screamed due to the great pain their bodies experienced when performing and receiving the Kamehame. But especially Vegeta, who had gone flying once more, until in a few seconds he was completely out of sight, again. And as on the previous occasion, the public discussed Goku's move. However, this time the move was discussed in streaming. From the other world. Other world. North Kai planet. Tata Tata this car is the best. And this magic road that Broly has created for me to compensate for the loss of my other car is also the best, North Kai said, who was enjoying his new custom-made car while driving it on a magical road Broly had created for him, magic road inspired in Mario Kart's Rainbow Road. When suddenly. Their antennas detected something. This key. Oh no, the combat. I had forgotten about him. Again. Is that Goku's key? It cannot be possible. It's too high to be his key. Oh no. He has used Kaioken to that level. He's crazy. His body cannot bear that multiplier. And he's barely without energy. And. Oh no. That scion has become a great ape. And he's still alive. Oh no. Goku. You only have one alternative. You should use that. But you will only have one chance. North Kai shouted, who stopped the car and began to watch the fight with great concern. Back to Earth. On the battlefield. Goku with his gaze towards the horizon was looking for Vegeta at the same time that he tried to rest and recover from his injuries. Wounds that were caused by himself for using the Kaoiken beyond his limits. That kind. He is still alive. He is very very strong, Goku said as he waited for his enemy, who surpassed him in power and energy reserves. However contrary to what he did in the official Dragon Ball, this time Goku was in a similar situation to what he was in the previous chapter. 
However, now he didn't just look up at the sky like an idiot and talk to Yajirob, who wasn't even present this time. No. This time he did something very rational. Get ready for Vegeta's arrival. And precisely he did it with an extremely powerful technique, one that required a lot of preparation time. The ground, the oceans, and every living being. Please share a little of your energy with me. I'm begging you. And with this plea Goku began to perform his Genkidama, gathering the energy he could from the entire planet without human collaboration through the process of raising his hands to the sky. And while everyone but Broly watched fascinated as the energy of an entire planet began to gather in a single individual. Vegeta was starting to get up and recover from the second Kamehame, in this saga Vegeta had an inhuman resistance, resistance that he will never have later, be it Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT or Dragon Ball Super. And this time, just like the last time, he took his time to recover energy, since he understood that Goku had spent almost all his energy in his last attack. And he wasn't wrong. So after three minutes, he reappeared in front of everyone one more time this day. Kakarado. How you dare. No one had ever hurt me to such an extent. I'll kill you. I will destroy you and this entire solar system. I don't plan to leave even dust. Vegeta yelled as he flew at full speed with more hatred than ever. And this time Goku was able to gather all the energy he needed for this final phase. Goku don't fail. You only have one chance. North Kai shouted from the other world even knowing that Goku wouldn't hear him. However, Goku did something that North Kai didn't expect, eh. He didn't gather the Genki Dama in his hand to create a compact but very powerful energy sphere or gather it in the sky to create a giant sphere. Goku was assimilating this energy for himself. Eh. I haven't taught you to do that. When did you learn it? Wait. Is that even possible? North Kai shouted when he saw the great feat that Goku was performing. Goku was using the energy of a planet to regain his energies and increase his power for a short duration. He wasn't using that great power in a single attack with a high probability of failing, but consistently administering it in his own body. Genki Lady. Broly version, Goku screamed while he was being illuminated by a crisp bluish-white aura all over his body. Hey, Broly version. Damn you Broly. We agreed that I would teach him and you would only be his sparring partner. You have taught him a version of my own technique, one that not even I know. This is cheat. You stole my best student. North Kai yelled very furiously at Broly, as he felt as if he had been cheated on by a relative. Ha ha ha. I just shared a little bit of Moro's inspiration with Goku. Although this version doesn't absorb the soul of living beings and is respectful with the environment, Broly thought as he laughed at North Kai's reaction. And of course he was also glad to hear that Goku had kept his promise to announce the name of his technique, so that he could laugh at North Kai's reaction when he heard it. Dai Kakarado. Garlic Cannon. Dai Kakarado. You shouldn't have any energy left. You can't do anything against this shouted and thought King Kong Vegeta, who launched into motion his characteristic technique for that time. And immediately, Kamehameha. Goku used a new Kamehame to deflect Vegeta's energy attack, again. What? Impossible. How can you have energy left? Ah. Oh. And once again Goku's Kamehame surpassed his garlic cannon, I think this is the reason why in the following sagas he always invented new techniques. So Vegeta was dragged back by Goku's Kamehameha again. Damn, this is the third time the same thing happens. Damn all. Monkey Vegeta yelled as he tried to slow his uncontrolled advance with his feet, thus creating a dual lane highway with his giant paws. But something was different this time. Since Goku moved at great speed to get behind Vegeta's huge body, which was still being pushed back uncontrollably. Slash. And with his hand he cut off the monkey tail of Prince Sion and walked away from there, to avoid being crushed by his giant ape-like ass. Bomb. And by losing the great increase in power of the Oozuru form and its enormous size, the Kamehameha hit fully and without resistance against Hai. Aw. Oh. Eh. It seems that I have one. Ah, Kai. Goku gasped as he looked at the crater where Vegeta must have landed and tried to assimilate what he had left of Genkidama to fully regain his energies and try to heal his wounds. Cross. Crash. Cross. And from the crater, like a zombie. Vegeta got up again. Seriously, in this saga Vegeta was immortal. A Vegeta devoid of armor, seriously injured, covered in his own blood from head to toe, with an arm and several ribs broken and without a tail. 
I defeated Vegeta who only moved due to his pride, who refused to acknowledge his defeat and surrender. You. Don't make light of the Vegeta the Great. Vegeta yelled as he barely advanced towards Goku, wanting to continue fighting and above all, kill his enemy. And obviously this act of extreme pride, bravado, insanity, and unconsciousness won the fascination of the entire public. This, this guy is incredible in his way, said Krillin, who was impressed and terrified by the power, persistence, and stubbornness of Vegeta despite despising him like no one else. Such tenacity, Yamcha said, who didn't even know what that was. He has been a tough nut to crack, said Piccolo, who was partly happy that Goku had won, and enjoyed this match very much, but didn't want to express it openly. My dad is the best. I told you he would win, Gohan shouted enthusiastically to Yam. Ahem. Yes, I didn't expect less from one of my apprentices. Although being analytical you are now stronger than your father, Broly said as he protested again when he saw that Gohan didn't consider him the best. Vegeta, leave it. You fought well. Yam murmured, who was hurt to see how Vegeta had been so badly injured and proud of the great fight he had carried out. Since from the beginning there were suspicions that he would be unable to win, since the game administrator himself was in favor of one of the fighters. However, she watched without amazement and great emotion how Vegeta fought against all adversities without losing his pride even when he was badly injured and without energy. Showing the scion pride that until recently she believed she had. Pride that was gradually replaced by a bitter sensation as she recalled all the events that happened on this peripheral planet. And while Yam looked at Vegeta with some sadness. Vegeta kept moving slowly but surely to Goku, still wanting to fight, Kakarot. Pum. However, Goku welcomed him with a punch that made him eat sand once again. And at the same time he spoke the last words to him in this combat, my name is Goku. And I'm proud that I grew up on Earth. Never forget it. My name is Goku. And I'm proud that I grew up on Earth. Never forget it, Goku said looking over his shoulder at Vegeta, who was lying on the ground half dead from a hard fight and having lost his tail. Vegeta had no energy reserves. Serious injuries all over his body that hardly allowed him to move. Was surrounded by enemies, enemies that at this moment each and every one of them could kill him. His only possible ally whom he had not yet killed, had been lobotomized and was unable to fight. His ship had been hijacked by the greatest abomination he had ever known. And his pride was fractured after losing to someone he had despised and undervalued in every possible way before and after the fight. He was absolutely fucked. Goku. Dad. All the Z warriors shouted I enjoy, except Piccolo, seeing how their hero had shown the great potential of human martial arts to the universe. Aha. Guys, Goku said with great tiredness and pain, he could hardly stand up, but he was also very happy to see how his friends celebrated his triumph. They were so happy that everyone, except Piccolo, ran to hug him enthusiastically, as if they were fans of a soccer team going down to the field when their team had won the league in that last match in the last minute. But. Aw. Oh, Tom. They hit themselves halfway with a hard invisible wall, as if they had hit their heads against a glass so clean that was impossible to see. And as they rubbed their reddened noses, looked at the alleged 100% sure guilty. Bravo. 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 It was a super close match in which there was blood, excitement, epic speeches, insults, flashbacks. You gave the coup de grace thanks to the technique that I taught you during breaks, while Kaiyu-chan cooked. And you have achieved all that without the help of Krillin, Gohan and Yajirobe, who has not even deigned to come. Broly said as he approached Goku, applauding as he commented the outcome of the fight and compared it with the official version, out loud. Hey. What the hell are you saying? Everyone shouted, including Goku and Piccolo, and especially Krillin and Gohan, they were very confused by the barrier he erected in order not to celebrate Goku's victory and the strange comment that possibly referred to an alternative world that only existed in his strange mind. Or maybe not. I didn't say anything. Ehem. It's not time to celebrate yet. The fight is not over yet. Vegeta still hasn't given up, and I doubt he will do it, he is still alive and slash or is not inside a jar. Until we come to a conclusion, this fight will not end and we will not be able to enjoy the victory banquet that I have prepared. You see, I am a sometimes cruel, bastard, annoying and irritating god. But just, kind and generous in the end. Love me, Broly said pretending not to have said anything suspicious before, reported why he had stopped the celebration and showed some anger of in principle unknown origin, as if he had been offended by someone's comment or attitude. Banquet. The most gluttonous and noisy shouted in amazement. 
Okay, all except Piccolo, but especially Goku. And Krillin suspecting the origin of Broly's discomfort said, Broly-san, why do you say that, we never. However, Broly quickly interrupted him bluntly, I can read minds, although on many occasions I don't or pretend not to. Eh. Hey. I won't say anything else. Krillin replied after picking up on the hint and being scared by all the negative reviews he had of Broly in his mind. This. What will happen to Vegeta if I kill him? Will you bring him back to life? Goku asked which after fantasizing about the banquet and ignoring the rest of the conversation, he worried again about ending the fight. Hey! Goku, what are you trying to say? All his friends asked, who understood that Goku was about to do something stupid and irresponsible, again. Yes, I will resurrect him, but he has not won, which is why, like Raditz, he has lost his freedom. I will take him to a place where he will never see the sunlight again, I'll shave him like his father, I'll make him see his defeat every time he sleeps in his dreams, I'll make him be beaten by five-year-olds with reduced mobility, I will make him dance ridiculously until he gets sores on his feet while wearing an apron. I will chemically and non-chemically castrate him to prevent him from reproducing. And when he tries to commit suicide I will resurrect him indefinitely over and over again. The only way out for him is for me to get bored of him someday and that I throw him to the attic next to my electric guitar and skates. And it is hard for me to get bored of things. Broly said explaining what he planned to do with Vegeta, the person who was officially married to his girlfriend, and whom he did not intend to treat with kindness, especially at this point in the mang, where he was a fucking scum. What? Vegeta and Yam shouted, they couldn't believe that Broly, who until now had only seen him do normal level jokes, hit them sometimes, heal and resurrect peoples suddenly became such a sinister and cruel torturer. What a son of a bitch, those not involved in that torture thought, but suddenly they panicked remembering that Broly could read their minds and tried not to think about anything else. That is extreme even for me, said Piccolo, who was impressed by the wickedness of who until then believed that he was a somewhat bastard and selfish goody with too much power. I see. So. I think I give up. Hee <laughs> hee. Goku said quite relaxedly, as if what Broly had said did not deserve any extra appreciation. Pppffff. Ha ha ha. And that answer made Broly burst out laughing although he was already expecting that answer. Eeh. And unlike him, the others shouted when they heard the answer, although they also expected it. What the hell is this idiot saying? Vegeta thought with dismay, jubilation and rage, since this development of events was not expected for him. Why dad? Gohan asked, that given the circumstances he shouldn't question him, since he did the same. But he's a little boy, therefore he asked many questions about everything. Of such a stick, such a splinter. Piccolo and Yem said at the same time. Have you lost your mind, Goku? This guy tried to kill our friends and everyone in this world. If we let him go now he'll surely come here to kill us again. If you think this guy'll chong his ways like Piccolo or Ten did, then you're making a huge mistake. This guy isn't like that. Is a monster that even killed his own friends. Several of his friends said to try to convince him that this was not a good idea. However as with almost all the useful advices that our friends have ever given us in our life, we have ignored them, and Goku was no different, I know but. That Vegeta is on hell of a strong guy. I can't really explain it, but killing him would be a great waste. I guess it's because I'm a scion too. Whenever I see someone strong my chest throbs. I want to fight with one more time. He has a lot of room for improvement. As whimsical as ever. All the Z warriors said upon hearing his absurd explanation, even Piccolo. Well, what are we going to do about it? The father copies the son this time. The winner of this match is Vegeta. But by default, due to pity, the worst kind of victory. If I were you, I would even feel insulted for winning in this way. Broly said declaring Vegeta the winner while bleedingly disrespecting him. Fucking bastard. Someday, someday. I swear. The next time I'll exterminate all of them. Vegeta thought with bloodshot eyes as he used all the power in his body to get up from the ground to try to maintain what little dignity he had left that day. And moments later when he managed to stand up despite staggering over and over again he said, cut this shit. I want my wish now. It should be said, please. But yes, yes of course. What do you want to order? Peace in the universe. Cure all existing diseases. Bring all scions back to life including your father and your planet? Give back to that pretty girl who loves you so much her ability to try to be as despicable as you that my student has stolen? Broly replied explaining possible options in an extremely sarcastic way. 
WHWHW. What? Yam thought with panic, shame and anger upon hearing that last possibility. Who loves you so much? What the hell was that motherfucker saying? Is he always looking for a way to humiliate everyone? Hadn't she had enough already? And after a few seconds in which Vegeta blushed for a second in which he looked at Yam without knowing what to say or think, he behaved again as the cold, calculating being that until now had been, haha. Stop saying stupid things. Bring the trash back to life and rebuild a filthy planet. Losing a valuable desire to help a former subordinate who should already be dead. You still don't know me well. Therefore, after a moment when everyone appreciated Vegeta's foreseeable perversity and Yam's bitter but sympathetic expression. Vegeta arrogantly formulated his wish, for a moment I thought about asking you for the transformation method that the brat used, but it is not a high priority for now since with my Oozer transformation I can obtain a similar strength. Something that really tempts me is the formula to become the legendary Super Scion, which you possibly have. However, I will continue with my original plan. With absolute immortality it is only a matter of time before I can achieve all my goals. That transformation, being the legendary Super Scion, ruling the universe, destroying this filthy planet. And if I want more wishes I just have to go to the planet Namek, if a Namekian here has created them on the origin planet there must be more. Hee <laughs> hee, nothing will be out of my reach. And upon hearing his intentions, expressed in an incredible murderous aura and genuine conviction to accomplish his goals, objections were heard among the public, this guy is despicable. Broly, I think you shouldn't. But Broly did not listen to the advice of his friends. Okay. Your wish will be granted. Enjoy your immortality, Broly said, snapping his fingers and granting the wish to Vegeta. Oh no. Everyone but Goku and Yam shouted at the same time when they saw that Broly had just done something terrible, for them and for the universe. You shouldn't give such a power to a psychopath like him. And Vegeta quickly began to notice that something in him was changing after the snap of fingers. Yes, this feeling. Something is changing in me. I feel power. I feel like my wounds. Wait. Why aren't my wounds healing? Vegeta asked, who did not understand why his totally wounded and energyless body did not recover instantly after achieving perfect immortality. The logical thing would be for his body to repair itself and recover all the energy and stamina quickly. But it wasn't, he felt exactly the same as before. And that's when Broly's solemn face changed, being replaced by that of a fucking manga bastard who had won a card game with elaborate and crawling traps while explaining in his inner monologue how he had won with cheats, observing with satisfaction the miserable situation of the one to whom he had ruined his life, oh yeah. You see, in the case of asking a wish in a non-altruistic way, if your team has not won the team match, it comes with certain disadvantages. In the case of immortality, it is that your body from now until eternity will stay exactly the same. Just as young, just as healthy, well-fed, muscular, alive, that it will be impossible to kill in any way or deteriorate you with anything, but with the same injuries, energy levels and power as at the same moment you asked for that wish. So you should forget to heal, recover and become stronger. For this reason I suggested one of those altruistic wishes. But anyway, I have to respect the individual initiative of other people, even if they are wrong. Oh yeah. You see, in the case of asking a wish in a non-altruistic way, if your team has not won the team match, it comes with certain disadvantages. In the case of immortality, it is that your body from now until eternity will stay exactly the same. Just as young, just as healthy, well-fed, muscular, alive, that it will be impossible to kill in any way or deteriorate you with anything, but with the same injuries, energy levels and power as at the same moment you asked for that wish. So you should forget to heal, recover and become stronger. For this reason I suggested one of those altruistic wishes. But anyway, I have to respect the individual initiative of other people, even if they are wrong, Broly said to Vegeta while trying to make it 100% evident that he had cheated on him and was enjoying this situation very much. And after a few seconds of silence, in which absolutely everyone watched Broly with narrowed and dismayed eyes, the mouth wide open due to stupefaction, amazement, admiration, hate, fear, bewilderment and many other emotions being the least expected person who broke the silence in the least expected way. Ha 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 ha. This is the first joke you make that has really been funny. Ha 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 ha. Piccolo said while holding his belly, which started to hurt from how much he was laughing. He hey. Broly you really scared us, Ten and Chaos said after feeling deeply relieved. We thought you were really going to give that beast so much power. Ha ha ha. Yamcha and Mutant Rashi said, after feeling relieved too. Gohan tried to hold back his laughter, 
covering his mouth with both hands, PFF, PFFFFF. Krillin was laughing at Vegeta, who was still looking at Broly in shock, his face, wa hua ha. And Yam looked at the bottle where his sister was still locked, now not regretting her decision at all. Vegeta expressed his extreme confusion, anger, helplessness and outrage, as if he were a retiree who had run out of savings due to a bank scam and was going to protest to the branch director, you. You. Eh. Damn fucking bastard. You didn't say anything like that. You never asked me if there were more conditions. Did you really think I was going to give such a convenient wish to a bastard like you just like that? Ha. Huh. You're the one who still doesn't know me well enough. Wa 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 wa. Baka. 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 Wa ha 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 ha. Broly said as he laughed evilly while making an extremely evil face that was even scaring his own allies. Broly Sensei, now you look like the real villain, Gohan thought as he observed a wickedness that was out of the scale of evilness on his sensei's face and the utter despair on Vegeta's face. No. It can't be, this can't be happening. This is horrible, this is something worse than death. It's no different than what would happen if I lost, Vegeta thought as he fell to the ground on his knees. If it weren't for the fact that he couldn't hurt himself anymore because of Broly's flawed wish, Vegeta would be spitting blood right now and surely one of his eyes would have exploded due to the great anger he felt. He had achieved his goal. But at a price he was unwilling to accept. Hey. Ah. Wait Broly. If I have understood correctly, have you made him unable to recover or become stronger? Goku yelled, still complaining about his injuries and asking Broly what he had done to be sure he understood everything, even though it was evident. Yes, it is a good summary, Broly replied resetting his facial expression so as not to look like a blood-eating human-eating demon like few seconds ago. Eh. That is not possible. If so, my surrender has been useless. This way I won't be able to fight him again. Goku yelled very outraged too, almost as much as Vegeta. Mmm, well, you may be right. What do you think of this Vegeta? I can cancel your immortality. Although. Of course you can't ask me for another wish, just cancel this one inch Broly said trying to pretend to be sympathetic. For real. Yes. Cancel it right now. Vegeta yelled, who had regained hope again, but still wary that Broly kept his word, as if he were a dog that had been mistreated multiple times and is afraid when someone tried to pet him. Of course. As long as you thank Goku and me for giving you this second chance. You will have to thank in a viriiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
Nachan. Where is Nappa? And. And Vegeta. Ah. The pervert. Ginger yelled, who tried to understand the strange situation she was in while hiding very embarrassed and fearful behind her sister to avoid Rashi's lewd hands. And before Ginger continued to cause a show and asked more questions, Yem stopped that situation by affectionately hitting her head, Ginger, get on the ship, I'll explain everything later. So Ginger, understanding that something had happened to Vegeta, and Nappa, and especially his sister, who had a strange look and behavior, answered while obeying her, Ooki sister. It was then that Gohan, concerned about the person he had brainwashed asked, what will you do from now on? However Yem only replied inside her spaceship ship, while Ginger grimaced at mutant Rashi, we'll see. Foo. Foo. And in this way all aliens were eliminated or expelled from planet Earth. It's a pity, those girls are hot. Should have offered to stay in my house to live, said mutant Rashi, who felt he had missed a great opportunity in his new life as a young single man. And Goku crumbled to the ground, shattered by Vegeta's wounds and his own double-edged technique. Wounds and pain that until now he only mitigated thanks to the variant of Genki Dama that Broly had taught him, but that due to the little control of Goku dissipated in no time. Eh. I was recently resurrected and now I feel half dead. Haha, <laughs> Goku said as he looked up at the sky with great difficulty breathing. Goku, eat a Senza bean. You will recover right away, said Krillin as he took a Senza bean from the large bag that Goku brought with him and put one in his mouth. Nayam. Thank you Krillin. This has been an awesome match. I'm dying to fight someone as strong as him again, Goku said after recovering and thinking again about his addiction. Please don't talk about fighting and dying for a while, said Krillin, who was only thinking of having a long vacation right now. I agree. Besides, only I have the authorization to kill you, Piccolo said in a braggart, but also comical and ironic way, since to date he had been the only one capable of killing him. Ha 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 ha, they all laughed to release the tension accumulated by this crisis and also by the previous one in which Piccolo was the antagonist. But now for some reasons they were treating him like another partner. Eh. Yeah. At last I will be able to relax a little and enjoy a bit of peace, said Gohan, who stretched out on the ground just like his father and looked at the sky with happiness, thinking that from now on everything would be fine. However. Take this Gohan, said Broly who approached him and handed him a Senza bean. And this because? I'm barely hurt, replied Gohan, who was puzzled by this action. To which Broly replied, I know, but you will need all the possible energy taking into account what awaits you next. And moments later. An apocalyptic sound overwhelmed our tired and relaxed protagonists. Gahan. Gahan. Said someone with a powerful, sinister and furious voice from the underworld that echoed through the until few minutes ago peaceful wasteland. Eh? Oh no. Chi Chi. Mama. Goku and Gohan shouted when they recognized the person with that bloodthirsty voice that was right above them, in Bulma's official vehicle in which everyone traveled in times of emergency. However, that was not the most surprising thing. Hey guys, said another less aggressive female voice coming from the same direction. Since someone was descending without flight equipment from the vehicle, someone from whom nobody expected this feat. That's why everyone said incredibly surprised, I. It can't be. Bulma? That's right. Bulma had jumped out of her flying vehicle and flew down in the same way our heroes did, where our heroes were. Hello honey, I've missed you, Broly said opening his arms to receive her in the middle of the fall. It's only been a few hours, you can't miss me that much, hee <laughs> hee. By the way. Couldn't you have been even more exaggerated? Bulma said sarcastically as she fell into Broly's arms. Come on, you know I have held back a lot, Broly said as they started acting lovely dovey in front of everyone. This was a gooey situation that almost nobody liked, especially one of those present, but that sultry scene for their eyes did not make them forget what had just happened a few seconds ago. Bulma, you just flew. Fly through key. H how is that possible? Yamcha asked, who asked in part for the extreme curiosity he had, and because nobody likes to see how your ex improves in life by being with another man. Let's say it's the fault slash merit of my boyfriend. It's not like I'm opposed to being powerful like you or not that I had any interest. I just didn't want to and couldn't train like an animal out of this world to accomplish it. But when Broly taught me that there were other methods that did not require training to become strong and that there were techniques such as the body multiplication, which is helping me to advance with my experiments as if there were 100 Bulmas. 
I can't find reasons why I shouldn't become the smartest and strongest woman in the world, Bulma said showing her increase in power had not been the only thing that Broly had influenced her, he ego also multiplied exponentially. So you've come down like that to show off? Krillin asked suspiciously. And Bulma, who was not at all embarrassed by that replied, yes, but above all to get away as soon as possible. Gohan. Gohan. Gohan, shouted Chi Chi, who ran like a brave bull towards her son, who did not know how to react to the presence of his angry mother. He had lied to her completely for a year and had come to fight although she didn't want him to. Surely she was very very angry and that she was going to scold him strongly. Gohan Chan, I'm glad you're okay. I was so worried. Are you okay? Chi Chi yelled as he hugged Gohan and checked that his son was not missing limbs or had been hurt. Huh? And obviously Gohan was confused, he expected a quarrel and not a hug. This, hello Chi Chi, said Goku, who had not seen his wife in a year and in his own way missed her. Gohan is fine, but Goku's in worse condition. Hey! Hey, look! Over there! Krillin said, who wanted to mediate in that matter. However, both were ignored. Surely you've been very scared. Mommy will never let you leave your side again. Chi Chi said as she continued displaying her ultra protective mother complex. Honey, promise me that when we have children you will not become hysterical, Broly whispered to Bulma after seeing how incredibly psychotic and obsessive Chi Chi was with her son. Oh. Are you already thinking about having a child? Hee hee, how cute, Bulma replied to Broly also whispering flirtatiously. Nothing's wrong, mom. I'm fine. Gohan said, relieved that there was no punishment or anger, that's why he tried to calm her down to prevent her from continuing to embarrass him in front of everyone, they were still filming. However, the remedy was worse than the disease. For real. So. Now I'd like you to explain why you were here when I forbade it and for how long you've been lying to me. Explain yourself little boy. Was you father the one who convinced yo to do this? Shouted Chi Chi, who continued to behave like a psychotic but now a more dangerous one, not only for her son, but also for the rest of the population. Hey! What are you talking about? I was dead. Goku thought, feeling very offended and confused by that comment, he had done nothing, nothing at all. A, hey, this. I, this. Gohan said, very overwhelmed and intimidated by the situation, not knowing what to say or respond in front of the most terrifying being in the universe. His mother. Which he did not know how to face, especially because he was in the wrong. For this reason, he looked at his partner in crime for support. And for this he used the deadly technique that he had been practicing for months. Puppy watery eyes. A deadly technique in which Gohan looked at his sensei like an adorable hungry abandoned puppy crying for some food. And since everyone was looking at Broly at that moment after seeing Gohan's adorable face desperately asking for help Broly had no choice but to do what he always did. His specialty. Lying and manipulating emotionally. Chichi-san, you shouldn't blame Gohan. The reason he was in two places at once is because I taught him a technique that allows him to multiply by 100 if he have 100 units of power or more. A technique that he asked me to learn so that he could study hundreds of subjects at the same time while he was with his mother whom he loves so much, precisely at the moment when she felt most alone after the death of her father. The poor Gohan-chan just wanted to be with you at the same time that he was preparing to give you a big surprise by showing that even now as a toddler he could be accepted at any university in the world. And as for the fight. At first I did not want him to participate in this event either but, almost every time he finished an exam with a 10 and he asked me about his father, how strong he is and how much he wanted to be as strong as he was and how he wanted to see him. I simply could not prevent him from participating in this event as a reward for his great development. Therefore, after taking all the necessary measures to guarantee the safety of your son and that of all the participants, except Yangcha, I let him participate. I understand your feelings as a mother Chichi-san and I regret not having warned you in advance, but... It was impossible for me to deny a genius in everything the only thing that he has ever begged me, make his two parents proud in the two subjects they love the most, studies and martial arts. I take full responsibility. Sorry. And after a few seconds in which everyone listened with stupefaction that extremely effusive speech extremely well executed, either in dialogue and performance, which even almost convinced those who knew or suspected that all of this was a fucking lie to a certain point. This. Gohan, is all that true? Chi Chi asked very shocked as she looked at her son. And Gohan, after being perplexed by all the lies that Broly had told in his favor, replied in a cowardly but sensible way, this, yes, it's all true mom. 
Ah, my Gohan, you are such a good and considerate boy. Sorry for yelling at you, but your mother was scared to death, Chi Chi yelled once more like a hysterical overprotective mother as she hugged Gohan one more time. And as for Gohan, this time he kept quiet so as not to worsen the situation. While inside Bulma's vehicle, the television presenter said through portable television that they were carrying to watch the combat during the journey, you have already seen it, dear spectators. The Earth has been saved once again thanks to the appearance of strong fighters. The Terracoles have been able to teach those aliens who are the number one and made them ran with their tail between their legs. Although honestly, some of them don't seem to be Earthlings, in fact, the one who seemed to have everything under control seems to be of their race. And seriously, that green guy, does not look much like King Piccolo, yes that same one, the one that terrorized this world less than a decade ago. No one remembers his appearance anymore except for me. And by the way, the guy. That strange-haired guy looks a lot like the Chiel who defeated him, right? Seriously, that hairstyle is unmistakable, I doubt that there are many people with the same style. Am I really the only one who notices these details? Do we have monkeys working in the research department? Yes. 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 I know. I only have to transmit the stupid patriotic propaganda. No one cares about my valuable opinions. I live surrounded by idiots. Surely in the future if any of these murderous maniacs wander around our world like normal people no one will remember them. And seriously nobody is going to try to interview those people who just saved us all. Are we not even going to try to locate them? Damn, we have pretty accurate filming, it shouldn't be impossible to know their identities to talk to them later, and give them an achievement medal or something. This have no fucking sense. In addition, before there were humans and animal humanoids living together with total normality and in a matter of a few years the animal humanoids have disappeared from the cities as if they no longer existed. Does anyone else seem strange? Damn, our king is a humanoid animal. Why is this not a matter of national interest? Besides, you didn't realize that. Yes. 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 Now I'll say all that bullshit. Once again the earth has prevailed and we will do it again no matter how many times our enemies try to finish us off. Long live the earth. I hope I can retire soon. Speech that our brave warriors, whom nobody would try to locate after having saved the world once more to give them a fucking medal or something just like they did with Satan in his false victory against Cell, did not hear, since they were trying to regain their mental energy after a year of constant tension from the invasion. So, to make sure everything was over and they could finally rest, someone asked a question. Well, I guess the problems are over for now, this time for real. Right? Krillin said while looking at Broly for an affirmative confirmation. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.